بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمد ونصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد لا يأتينا على أمة ما أتى على بني إسرائيل بزي وذا سورة البقرة and the cow and the plotting of the people of Batil in today's current situation with the virus and concerns we need to increase our amal in the absence of amal Batil has an opportunity to overwhelm Haq we have no option precautions are in its place a greater precaution إِنَّهُمْ يَكِيدُونَ كَيْدًا وَأَكِيدُ كَيْدًا We need to draw Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help to a level where Allah Himself takes the people of Batil to task. Continuing Musa alayhi salam with the Bani Israel was saved from Fir'aun and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called him to go to Mount Tur and uh, at that time when he left, the time period given was for 30 days. And he told the people, he gave them instructions that I will be back after 30 days. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided that it should be extended to 40 days. Harun alayhi salam was made in charge. The Bani Israel became upset. And in the 10 day period, so from the first day, obviously Samiri was plotting and planning. But remember, Musa alayhi salam left for 40 days when Dajjal will come, the likewise Samiri, and we'll get into that in his history, he will also be on earth for 40 days. And Samiri was a disbeliever, a kafir, a, a idol worshipper, but he showed himself to be a Muslim. So like that we will have people that will be con men, they will be spies, and different plotting and planning. Samiri then collected the gold from the Bani Israel, like that the world people will collect your gold, they will collect your wealth, they will collect the entire world economies and he put it in a kiln and he melted that. But that jewelry was taken jewelry which the, was taken from the Egyptians and the Bani Israel did not return it to them. Then he took the dust from Jibreel salatu salam and he put that into the calf and different signs whether it moved, whether it made a sound but he gave it life and he told Bani Israel that Musa Islam had made a mistake and he went to look for his Allah but your, Allah, your God is here so let us look at the history of the Bani Israel and you can imagine in what a short period they turned means they seen all the miracles, they seen all the help of Allah Yet in a short space of time they turned. Likewise, when the Samiri Dajjal will come in the last part of this Ummah, people that we regarded as Buzruks and pious people, and this person here is Dajjud Guzar, like how the Bani Israel in a short period, if we could safely say the last 10 days was a climax, within that time most of the Bani Israel turned to cow worship. If we look at the history and discuss previously also, the history was of slavery and idolatry and cow worship was, was prevalent at that time. So he fashioned this with his hands. So the people of Batil also will fashion structures with their own hand. They will create structures to dissuade the people of Haq. And he said, I seen something which nobody ever seen. I saw the greenery on the ground when Jerusalem came. I took a first full of dust from the feet of the horse. And that's where it gave it life also. So, وَمَا أُنزِلَ سُرَ بَقْرَ عَلَى الْمَلَكَيْنِ بِبَابِ لَهَا رُوتَ وَمَا رُوتَ From those farishas, that knowledge that came and the significance of Babylon and the significance of the ancient arts that is continuing as well today amongst the different sects and the plan and the climax will be like how Samiri used that knowledge, that sihar, that black magic to control the world. They also can use this black magic and this power and they are trying to do that to control the world. Likewise, Jinnah, Shayateen, Sihar to cause sicknesses, diseases and to help them in that line also. So when Musa came, then he took Samiri to task 
ثم اتخذتم العجل من بعدي وانتم ظالمون they were very oppressive one interesting thing is that for a you call bin ushribaha nukitat fiha nuktatun sauda we did a narration previously about the heart becoming an intoxicated qalu sami'na wa asayna the bani israel told musa alayhi salam we have heard but we will not follow you we will not follow you so even after the incident of the cow they contravened they were not ready to fo follow musa alayhi salam he will give us to big let us study and the kisses and story of the bani israel wa ushribu fi qulubihim al ij like how samiri fed them the love he poured it in their hearts where they overwhelmed their hearts thus ummaya also their hearts will be overwhelmed and they will be taken in control and they will lose control of reality going back to samiri the spoken word shomir in hebrew means protection so it's shomir shamir samir which means god protector so samir has that meaning there and if we look at the samiri nations it was of the ancient times as well so before musa alayhi salam there were tribes that lived between the euphrates and tigris and uh, the foundation stones of great civilizations at that time were initiated there were two groups the one that came from the south which were arab and the others that came from the north which were the samiri tribe the ancient city of samiri is also known after this nation which nowadays recently has been discovered which is called til abid which is in our english translation tel aviv and they found jewels and golden utensils there that have been recovered which is all of that time there so samiri belonged to the tribe which was iraq and if you look in at the company of dajjal and isfahan in iran in iraq and babylon it's all connected and he came in as a a disciple of musa alayhi salam and he joined the bani israel but he was a spy he was a scammer he was a dajjal a conman and that conman dajjal will come he will create the cow and he will entice everybody to follow him like samiri in a short space of time now we mentioned the cow in the beginning then there was an incident which happened of the cow where someone from the bani israel was killed the case was brought to musa alayhi salam so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called them and told them that you must sacrifice a cow inna allah ya'murukum an tadbahu baqara qalu atattakhiduna huzwa o musa you making a joke of this what's a cow slaughtering got to do with this yeah a'udhu billahi an akuna min al-jahilin this follow your nabi and exactly what i'm saying do it you'll see the benefits but when is right also had stories call you lana rabbaka yubayin lana ma hiya ask question upon question upon question which complicated again the bani said were not of the mizaj of accepting so anyway when they got the cow in the criteria it was told to rub the part on the corpse of the slain man means that to sacrifice a cow take a piece put it on the dead person when you will do it you will raise a dead man to life and he will tell you who killed him so bani israel had objections but eventually they did that and the hikmat of this entire story of the cow again was that they used to worship the cow from the beginning allah wanted to show them that the cow needs to be slaughtered or extending you slaughtering the cow and then the cow of samiri you worship that you need to slaughter that cow from your heart and like how now you need to kill the cow by killing the cow you will give the dead life you gave the dead man life and he spoke like that if you kill the cow of idol worship and worship if you please then your dead heart will also come to life and like how does live man will tell you the truth and he will solve your problem your dead heart when it comes to life then it will give life in this world and give you life in the year after and ayat amul ayat uzkuru ni'mati allati an'amtu alaykum wa id najjaynakum min ali fir'aun wa id atayna musa al-kitab 
وإذ استسقى موسى لقومه وإذ قال موسى لقومه اذكروا نعمة الله عليكم آيات upon آيات highlighting the bounties and the favor of Allah and the Bani Israel so what made him so special they didn't have really any special sifat or qualities but if we go back into history and the principles of sociology and anthropology we see that the beginning and that time in that area human civilization sociology politics and religion were controlled by which is known as the Amaliki, Qubti, Kinani, Anaki etc different other tribes that were in that area and they were at the height of disbelief, kufr, tyranny, zulum etc so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looked at the Bani Israel because they were the weakest of the lot they were the oppressed and Allah's help is what the madloom, the oppressed, not the zalim. So a question comes now that the Bani Israel, Allah in his hikmah chose them. They never followed the Nabi. But if we look at history and the historical points to the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, we see that the Bani Israel had settled in Hijaz before the birth of Isa alayhi salam. Why? Because they were promised they had settled in Hijaz, they had built houses, their synagogues, their schools, their military uh, cantonments and their forts. And they had established themselves, they had a permanent culture there. And that included, and we are in the riwayat, Banu Quraiza, Banu Nadir, Banu Qainuka, Banu Harith. So what was the reason that compelled them to give up Palestine, which was their sacred holy land? and the place which was proverbial at the time of rivers of milk and honey, what made them leave that? And secondly, that was an ideal land. They overlooked the greener pastures, the fertile soil, etc. The ancient land with rich amenities and they were came to an era, area where there was desert, no fertile land, etc. So again, going back into history, the Roman Emperor Titus, captured Jerusalem, he destroyed it, he uprooted their strong pride and arrogance and uh, he took control of its treasures. But in the books of the Bani Israel, they were promised somebody, a savior, a prophet amongst the Bani Israel. And he would come to Medina and they knew that that was the place. So the religious propagation of their forefathers, Ibrahim, Ismail, Ishaq, Yaqub, they would see success like how they had seen success in the past. And they would not see defeat, humility in all these areas. So if we look at the Torah mentions about Mount Salah, Medina is Mount Uhud to the east and Mount Salah to the west. So they were waiting for this promised Nabi that will come. But when the promised Nabi came, وَلَمَّا جَاءُمْ كِتَابٌ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ مُصَدِّقٌ لِمَا مَعُمْ They just promised Nabi, Nabi that came to them, كَفَرُوا بِهِ فَلَعْنَةُ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ They were not ready to accept Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam because he was an Ismaili, he was from Banu Ismail, not from Banu Israel, Israeli. So when they said that Allah will send a prophet from their own brothers, they expected to be from the Banu Israel. يَعْرِفُونَهُ كَمَا يَعْرِفُونَ أَبْنَاءَهُمْ They knew the true prophet as they would recognize their own sons. But because of their jealousy, their spite, and their sifat again, which is a predominant factor of the Bani Israel, we can well understand why they rejected Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam. After that, again, now in the promised scriptures, they are waiting for somebody big, the promised savior, and that is connected now to Dajjal. So we say in summary, and just going through current world events, and I'm going to run through it very fast, and we are not going in detail. Allah open up and Allah protect us from whatever it is. George Bush, when he gave a speech, he said in 1991, 16th January, we have before us an opportunity to forge ourselves and for future generations a new world order, a world where the rule of law and not the law of the jungle governs and conduct of nations. When we are successful, we will be have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and the vision of the UN founders, the new world order. 
He was speaking about the Illuminati and the masterminds, and we see like how Samiri gathered all the gold together, and he had one system in place, the New World Order, the Illuminati, the Freemasons, the Trilateral Commission, British Imperialism, International Zionism, all these forces together. One lady who was part of the skull says that it's a sadistic satanic cult led by the richest and most powerful people of the world. It is largely homosexual, pedophile practices, animal sacrifices, murder rituals. It works hand in glove with the CIA and Freemasonry. It's supremacist welcome and a part of the Jewish apostates. It controls world traffic in drugs, guns, pornography, prostitution. It has head and is behind political assassinations, behind 9-11, the Bali bombings. He's infiltrated every government organization on a national level, education, financial institutions, religion, and media. It is a world order and it will make the attempts of the Nazis and communists look like picnics. And there are a few different names and departments. The Council of Three, which is the primary day in contact, the Grand Council, three of them in direct contact with Iblis Shaitan, uh, under that Council of Five, then Council of Seven, Council of Nine, Council of Thirteen, Council of Thirty-Three, and then the Committee of Three Hundred. And in the invasion of Iraq also, they were trying to become immortal, so they did research, they found certain artifacts, Al-Man wa Salwa, the white powder of gold, there's other things which we won't get into now. Then government communication headquarters, which was an agency which monitors social media activity, email, cell phones, etc. There's 6,000 people working and engaging there with the secret intelligence of the MI5, MI6, and they are there to monitor all the information of the world. Now, why is monitoring important? Is because they need to know who Mahdi is. There's a camera focusing in front of the Baytullah. A lot of cameras we see today because there are people that have been dedicated to see that bad that takes place. They want to assassinate Mahdi. Likewise, the registers and the people that are born, like how Firaun wanted to kill Musa alayhi salam. Now they are planning to kill Mahdi, and that's their target. So they're monitoring every person that's born in Saudi Arabia for the name of Hazrat Mahdi and they're planning to see how fast they can detect it. Likewise, whoever is going to be part of his army and Jamaat, they want to detect them and eliminate them as well. So that's the GCHQ, which is known as. Then we have the Five Eyes, which is uh, a secret of global surveillance uh, organization, which is combined of the United States National Security, NSA, then you've got the GCHQ, then you got the CSEC, which is the Canadian Communication Security Establishment. Then you have the ASD and GCSB, different organizations. It was the beginning in 1946, for almost 70 years, they've been monitoring people and their lives. So we've got these different spy agencies, and Samiri, like a spy, was sent. they also trying to cover that. Just the 300. They have uh, uh, secret societies which control the world's largest financial institutions and governments. And that includes the Rothschild, Rockefeller, Oppenheimer, uh, Royal Family, Dutch Royal Family, Cecil Rhodes, Queen Elizabeth, Winston Churchill, Kissinger, JP Morgan, David Rockefeller. All of these different people have a part of these organizations. So one was the spy inside, then the other side was creating one body, was creating one body that will control the world. So we had the EU, which is a concept of the United Nations. Then we had America, the United States. So like that, they're trying to have countries consolidating countries so that they're under one control, one body. Washington, DC is a small area, but they're controlling so much of the world. So that's the idea. Then in research and technology, like how Samiri did research and his technology, we've got DAPA, which is Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, which is in the Nevada desert to create novel technologies, the Council of Foreign Relations, which is members of the CIA, NATO, which include people like Bush, Clinton, Carter, Nixon, Eisenhower, etc. All of these people in the Club of Rome of 1968, to facilitate the management of the world new order and they've said that they've got the enemy which is humanity they want to bring the world population to two billion people 
they will use war, famine, diseases, whichever means necessary. Then to create a cashless society, which will be in the mark on the right hand or on the person's forehead, the jali sign, to brainwash people to think. And their whole idea is to create one currency. If we see that the funds that have been used today in banks, etc., they have restricted cash. If you deposit more than a certain amount, there is certain laws and regulations to control people so you don't do cash and the black markets as well. Then the Bretton Woods system, which has the International Monetary Fund, IMF, and the World Bank, and all those structures, like how Samiri created one structure, all the cow in one, this is one structure that is in one. People who have opposed and we've called banking deaths, over 40 international bankers have allegedly killed themselves, they've committed suicide. So that's a very strange phenomenon. And at Area 51 also with the information of Samiri, the information of technology to control the world. May Allah SWT protect us. May Allah SWT save us. Uh, yesterday we mentioned the amal of reading Tabarak Alladhi. Let us try to make this a habit of reading more uh, every evening. Surah Tabarak Alladhi. Wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.